Joy, do you share Manchin's hope here? Well, I don't think so. I think he's very uh, naive, as uh, Chris Wallace called him. Um, he says that he's giving props to his Republican colleagues who are doing the right thing without regard to their careers. That's a very disingenuous remark from Senator Manchin because that's exactly what he's doing. He knows that straddling the, uh, the, the I guess, the Republican base, but I don't know how to put it, it's not straddling the base, that sounds a little sexual, but by doing what the Republican Party might like, he keeps his job in West Virginia, is my point. But we're talking about basically saving the country here, and I feel very sad for us and uh, annoyed with him, frankly. Right, right. So if Democrats don't have omnipotent one-party rule power propped up by Democrat state media propaganda, then the country's done for. Welcome back, everybody. Please hit that like button and subscribe. You may have noticed the media losing its mind over the fact that moderate Democrat Joe Manchin has broken with his party and Joe Biden on HR1 and getting rid of the filibuster. President Biden's push for voting rights and his big infrastructure package took a big hit on Sunday from a fellow Democrat. George, when there is a 50-50 Senate and all Republicans are in opposition, Joe Biden needs every single Democrat to get anything done. That could sink the move to override Republican state laws that limit voting access. Weijia Zhang is at the White House. Weijia, what are the odds that the president can get Manchin to change his mind? Good morning, Anthony. At this point, it looks like it is close to zero. Of course, Biden and the AOC communist wing of the Democrat Party want to get rid of the filibuster so they have absolute power. And H.R. 1 is meant to solidify that power for the foreseeable future. Democrats hate the filibuster when they're in power, but they love it when they're out of power. Manchin can see the obvious problems with this, especially since it's a party line vote with no Republican support. Not even the rhino wing of the GOP is going along with it. For all the talk we hear from the media about saving democracy, they sure are focused on securing one party rule and silencing the voices of over 100 million Americans. Over at the spew, they're not at all happy about this bipartisanship, which is really weird because they always love the maverick John McCain when he would break from his party. That 100% of the Republicans' focus is to block the Biden agenda. Okay, and? Isn't that typically what the party out of power does? For the last four years, Democrats opposed and tried to torpedo everything Trump did. They even called themselves the resistance. But here we go again with this complete lack of self-awareness and this inability to apply the standards they apply to their political opposition to themselves. It's just a complete lack of self-awareness. 100% of the focus. And so it is not only naive to think that bipartisanship in the Senate is possible, it is 100% uh, uh, just dead wrong. And let's think about what's happening in the states. You have uh, 389 bills, 389 bills in 48 states that would make it harder for their own residents to vote in upcoming elections. All of those bills have been put forth by Republicans. Nobody is making it harder to vote in elections. All we're doing is rolling back the rules to what they were pre-COVID, and some states are requiring voter ID, which is not hard to get. It's free in many cases, and if the Democrats wanted to, during their registration drives, they could sign people up for free IDs. There's actually zero proof that there's any widespread voter suppression going on at all. It's funny that Hostin here says that the Republicans want to cheat, but HR1 is all about Democrats securing power for the foreseeable future. And again, I just find this all really ironic because back when... And again, I find this all really ironic. I guess we shouldn't find this very surprising because the media is always hypocritical. It's like their main rule. But if you go back to the times of Joe Lieberman, he was a Democrat that would cross the aisle and be bipartisan very often. And he was always a target of the Democrat state media and the Democrats, exactly like they're going after Manchin now. But when we're talking about Republicans crossing the aisle, well, they turn them into heroes. They label them mavericks. There's so many uh, conversations about whether or not Republicans have to bend the knee to Trump. Trump. Well, do Democrats have to bend the knee to the squad and everything on the far left? Because it looks like AOC and the squad is dictating who is allowed in your party as well. Something about winning red states. But instead of taking the lessons of Joe Manchin, they'd rather just, you know, uh, call him a heretic and call him a traitor. And by the way, if you're a Republican that votes against your party, you're a hero and a maverick. So the media uh, coverage of him is really interesting, especially for someone like me. 
Everything Megan McCain just said right there is 100% accurate. But don't ever expect these harpies, her co-hosts, to ever admit their hypocrisy. They simply don't care that they're hypocrites because they know that nobody's ever really going to call them on it. Yeah, Megan just did it, but it will have no impact. All right, folks, that's all I have for this one. I'm not feeling great today, so I don't have a lot of time to do a video. But if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and keep coming back every day. I'll have new videos.